Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, guys and girls, to some more Steins Gate on the PlayStation Vita, also available on the PlayStation 4, but we are currently playing on the PlayStation TV. So we've got the best of both worlds here. We are back with the next video of our little series we've got going on right now, and things are actually pretty, pretty intense at the moment. We've had a look into the future, a look into the past. Right now, we're actually in the future, and um, Suzuha has gone with... Now, this girl is actually a orphan who Miyuri has adopted and she's gone with Suzuha in the time machine back to 1975. Now we stay behind Miyuri and Daru. I really don't know what's going to happen from here. This is the year 2036. We're going to continue on from that point right now. So let's check this out. She whispered towards the door, now sealed shut. <laughs> Yes, Kagari was the girl's name, the, the orphan. She booed up a time machine. Sazuha so snapped back to reality. Yuki was getting closer to the, to the development room she was hiding in. <laughs> Taru motioned for her to stop and then quickly slid into the room. As he reached down to pick up the vacuum off the floor, his gaze locked with Suzuha's as she hid under the desk. <laughs> Evidently, Yuki was trying to be nice by cleaning up. The place was pretty messy right now. Knowing Yuki's personality, Suzuha could imagine she'd want to clean up. Itaru grabbed what looked like a vacuum cleaner off the floor and left the development room. Future gadget number five. お掃除するための掃除機なのに分解したら帰って散らかすことになりません。はい。橋田さんって頭がいいのに時々うっかりなことしますよね。Itaru <laughs> started to panic again, and Suzuha sighed. Yeah, the reason why is because these two will actually be together in the future with Suzuha being our daughter. Now we've actually lied, Suzuha and Daru, that she's our sister because we don't want to destroy the um, or make any paradox in um, the timeline. So um, yeah, a few lies are going on right now. お食事のことうん。一応気をつけてはいるのだぜ。うん。一応じゃダメです。<笑> <laughs> yeah, that's actually the same thing we were just told by Suzuha. But Yuki was saying the exact same yeah, like I just said. They really were mother and child, perhaps. Suzuha was just beginning to feel a little homesick when she sensed another visitor approaching. The door to the lab opened and the greeting she'd heard many times before resounded throughout the room. Sorry, 
it was Miyuri coming to see Yuki. But there was another presence there too. Oh wow. When she heard his voice, Zuha ground her teeth a little. I was standing in the middle of Ikabukuro with a smartphone in one hand staring up at the sky. I've been trying to talk to the Yamada's Kirisu as much as possible lately. Sometimes I would contact her and sometimes Kirisu would contact me. It didn't feel any different than having a friend who lived in the real world. Talking on a smartphone in a crowded place like this was a little embarrassing, but I told myself that compared to the things I used to do, it was nothing. I'd chosen harmless to topics for our discussion, but it still reminded me so much of talking to the old Kirisu that I sometimes forgot myself. I'd done that just now, when I accidentally told her about the lab, she had seized on it. <laughs> Kirisu had been part of a lab in the Alpha World Line. In this world line, she died before ever becoming a lab member. Of course, she'd never even known where it was. Sazuha was living there right now, and Drew spent a lot of time there. If they found out about Kirisu, things could get complicated. Ten a.m. Even at this hour, the area in front of Ikebukuro Station was crowded. It was going to get even more crowded as it got closer to noon. Nanara. お前の知らない世界が広がっている場所だな。待って、今調べた。本当に興味が湧いたか。そ、そんなわけあるか。とにかく今日はあんたのラボに連れて行ってよ。And then she hung up. It was like I was her own personal taxi service. Kirisu couldn't move around on her own, so there was no getting around that, but... <laughs> she didn't seem to think very highly of me. At this rate, she might start treating me worse than a servant. The real Kirisu was one thing, or no, maybe it wasn't, but being treated that way by the artificial curiosity was incredibly humiliating. Wouldn't it be a humiliation for all of humanity? <laughs> As I mumbled to myself, Miyuri called out to me, she was carrying a lot of bags. It was probably materials for one of her costumes. Ne, ne. <laughs> 
のいや今日は別に予定はないまゆりはこれからバイトかううんラバでユキさんと待ち合わせラボ Was this good timing or bad timing? So, the Ocarin no, he's a shivery in Sonny Kanai. Yuki san no Tedori Motaberario. Saretone Mayushi mo Gambate Skuru Yote Nano de Do Kana. In the end, I went with her. Zaybun, <laughs> Ures so dana. Ures so dana. Miri had been smiling the whole time, but I was the opposite. The minute I got here, I was so nervous, I felt like I was about to throw up. I didn't really want to see Suzuha. Huh? Oh, Okabe じゃねえか Oh. The door to the Braun Tube workshop on the first floor opened and came out the building's owner, Yugo Tanuji. When I'd been living in the lab, I'd given the nickname Mr. Braun. It'd been a long time since I'd seen him. Okabe, その様子じゃちゃんと大学生やってるみたいじゃねえか。どうも。そういえば家賃ってどうしてるんだっけ ？I asked Miyuri instead of him. I used to give it directly to Tanuji, but. This man. Was he a rounder in this world line too? There was no way I could ask him. Alright, what we got here? Quiet Maho. How do things go with Kirisu after that? No problem. I see. Anything you can tell me, no matter how small, would be a help. But she's interested in Maiden's Road, maybe. What's that? A place where a whole world you know nothing about exists. Wait, I'll look it up. Bad idea, that darkness is very deep. If there's anything that seems off, I'll let you know. Would you? I know it's a lot of trouble. Alright, cool. One of the trophies is actually to uh, ignore one of these text messages, so... I really want to, but then again, I don't want to miss out on any of the story. But then some of these texts can actually change your ending and path in the, in the game. So as, as this is our first playthrough, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. So um, maybe next text, text message I'll have to ignore just for the trophy. I couldn't help but be wary of him. That's why I started to put some distance between us. If nothing else, I avoided trying to interact with him. Yeah, <laughs> Tanuji saw that I had gone silent and went back inside. Miyuri looked over at me with a worried expression. Tanuji didn't matter. What mattered was, why was I here? Did I feel like something needed to change? Or did I really want to show Kirisu the lab? I went up the stairs, still unsure of the answer. Miyuri went in first. I peeked inside the room. Daru and Yuki were there. Their eyes went wide when they saw me. I quickly scanned the room. There was no sign of Suzuha. Part of me was a little relieved. 
入っても自分のラボで遠慮とかねえよそれもそうかさすがにこの状況でクリスを呼び出すことはできなさそうだな I followed Miyuri to the lab and tried to relax my legs by sitting on the couch but I didn't feel relaxed at all it felt like my skin was crawling I glanced over at Yuki I'd heard about Yuki's future from Suzuha too. I still couldn't believe someone this pretty was going to marry Daru. Wait, is that a phone call? Oh god, it's actually. Is this wise? I ran into the into the development room in the back, clutching my smartphone. Oh god. I hadn't even checked with Maho and Dr. Leskinen to see if it was okay to tell other people about Amadeus. Kirisu lowered her voice as well. I sighed and held the smartphone up to my chest. <laughs> that wasn't much better. Well, it was true. Kirsi paused and smiled. Yeah, Kirisu in Alpha World Line, you said the same thing. <laughs> I suddenly heard the girl's voice from under the desk and was so surprised I screamed. Was she hiding? But why? Daru, Miyuri and Yuki heard me scream and ran over to see what the problem was. Suzuha looked upset. It was only then I realised who she was hiding from. Someone had left the TV on and it was playing the afternoon news. Suzuha knew no one was watching it, but she used the remote to turn the volume up anyway. She wanted to keep the girls in the shower room from hearing us. I could hear Miyuri and Yuki laughing from the shower. 
Things had gotten really awkward when Yuki had found Suzua, but Miyuri quickly came up with a plan. At first the plan was for the three of them, including Suzua, to shower naked together and hopefully get Yuki and Suzua more comfortable around each other. But Suzuha said that the shower room was too small for three people and refused. Suzuha was staring up at the ceiling. あ、<laughs> that was hard for us to, to admit. I guess I'd managed to fool them about Amadeus. そもそも彼女から隠れる必要があるのか。すでに誰の妹で通っているんだから、こそこそする方が逆に怪しまれるだろう。Suzuha had tried to avoid Yuki to begin with. Just meeting her father was enough to potentially cause a time paradox, she said, and that chance went up even more if she met her mother. But Yuki had found her, bef her before long, as Suzuha had been forced to say she was Suzuha's little sister, Yuki believed it, so why make things any more complicated? あまり会話しすぎると、ボロが出かねない。自分とよく似てる人間が現れたら、剣をするか、興味を示すかのどちらかだろうな。Right now, only a few people knew that Suzuha was a time traveller. Me, Daru, Miyuri and Paris. That was all. てか、このまま何も説明しなくていいんじゃね。え?あまねしはなんつか、秘密とか無理に聞きたがるような人じゃないと思うんだよね。鈴花でよくわかってるんじゃないか。確かに未来の母さんは、そんな人じゃなかった
想像もつかないなうん<笑> The conversation died again There was a ton of things I needed to talk to Suzuha about But that was why I couldn't say a word Maybe it was the same for her Since there was nothing else to do Suzuha and I turned back to the TV When news was still on As the newscaster spoke, I could see over a hundred women lined up in front of a store. On the TV, a girl in a pretty outfit was talking to an interviewer. ダレモコロサナクテイシダレニモコロサナクテイシダレニモコロサナクテイシダレニモコロサナクテイシダレニモコロサナクテイシダレニモコロサナクテイシダレニモコロサナクテイシダレニモコロサナクテイシダレニモ
Ugh. Oh. Right. So they were pouring a cup of water and I gulped it down. Uh, yeah. I sank into the sofa and tried to calm down. けど俺は何度も世界線を漂流してきたこことは違う世界線でタイムマシンに運命を翻弄される人たちを見てきた I looked straight into Sazua's eyes. お前の非合の結末さえ見てきた Humanity was powerless before the laws of this world.神の領分なんだ。それに触れれば俺たちはもっともっと残酷な罰を受けることになる。俺はそう思う。それがオカリンおじさんの答えなの。少なくとも今はな。そう。ただの逃げだと馴染んでくれてもいい。Sazua so looked up at the ceiling and sighed. That must have been the habit she'd picked up lately. Suzuki ただ、この新型の農園というのは具体的にはどのような症状が出るものなのでしょうか。新型農園は感染力は弱いのですが、潜伏期間が長く突然発症します。症状としては幻覚や記憶障害が主ですね。例えばそうですね。会社で仕事をしていた
that was exactly the same as reading Steiner. The interior of the time machine smelled like metal and was covered in instruments of different sizes. The girl inside was sobbing. It'd been almost an hour since Azu had left to go look around. She assumed that Kagari would have stopped crying by then, but she'd had no such luck. <laughs> Kagari Shina looked up at Suzua, her face wet with tears. Mama. Suzua walked over to Kagari and knelt down so he'd be at eye level. She had no intention of spoiling her. Her goal was to save billions of lives, and this was her first mission. いいか。これからは彼にも悪キューレの一員と見なす。私の部下として扱う。非戦闘員じゃないからな。ここは1975年だ。知ってる人間は誰もいない。父さんもマヨネーさんも出生してない。つまり。Kagri was a brave girl and she finally realised that now wasn't the time for tears. She tried to stop crying, it wasn't working well, but it was a lot better from her emotions than sobbing. She was a smart girl, Suzuha knew that. The machine had landed on the roof of the radio building, which was a spot that people visited often, the chances of anyone finding it were slim. But in this era, they had no one to help them conceal it. They meant they couldn't stay long. She needed to finish her mission quickly and move to the next time period. また<笑> stepped out of a, of a machine and beckoned to Kagari. <laughs> Kagri looked surprised, her eyes were narrowed at the bright sunlight. The sky above Tokyo in this time period was too dirty to be called blue. Smoke and dust clouds filled with who, who knew what were rising from the rows of smokestacks. It all combined with black exhaust from the cars that scurried around the ground to create a smog so thick you could literally see it. The sky above the sea was covered by a veil of death. But still, it was the first clear sky that Kagri had ever seen. He'd only ever known from books and videos that the sky could be this bright. The nuclear weapons used during the Third World War had changed weather over Tokyo, and the sky was constantly covered in dull grey clouds. The sun's light was always weak when it shone through them, and it was never this bright. Suzuwa looked up at the sky too. In 2036, you needed a filter and a mask to go outside for any length of time. Compared to that, 1975 was a lot cleaner. <laughs> Kagri slipped her hand into her pocket and took out the faded green Upa keychain. 
She stared at it with a sad look on her face. She was probably thinking about Miyuri, her mother, and she was probably trying to understand what it meant that her mother had put inside the time machine. Suzuka decided that Kagri was all right now and closed the hatch on the time machine from the outside. The lock flicked on automatically. The only person who could open it now was Suzuka, whose biometrics had been loaded into the system ahead of time. Even if someone did find the time machine, it would be a while before they found out what it was. Kagari, Suzuka handed her a printout of a photo. Is that an IBN? It looks similar. Ah, yes, this is the IBN 5100, a retro PC. この時代なら感動品が入手できる。これを手分けして探すのが私とお前の最初のミッションだ。うん。連絡はこれで。<笑> All right, we handed Kagari a small transceiver. 通信できる距離はかなり短いらしいから、気休め程度だと思え。えっと、大きい時。90分ごとにこのビルの前に集合。状況を確認。それを繰り返す。いいな。大きい時。いい返事だ。Sazu so nodded and patted Kagri on the head. よし。ミッション開始。Kazuha was on the top of the radio building in 2010 looking down. 35年か? That's how long ago it had been in real time since she'd spoken to Kagri here. From her perspective, it only had been a few months. The view from up here had changed a lot since then, and in the next 26 years, it would change even more. She'd seen for herself how this building changed over a span of 61 years. The thought didn't make her feel sentimental, instead she felt the loneliness and the fear that comes from having a past not shared with anyone else. Using the time machine to change the world lines means breaking the rules of the universe. Okabe's world words flashed through her mind. Still, lately she'd been thinking more about Kagari. She'd been searching the city as irregular intervals. She was looking for Kagari Shina. She didn't even know if she was in Tokyo. She had no clue she didn't even know what Kagari looks like now. So maybe it was a waste of time. Even so, she had to find Kagari herself, but she hadn't any better luck today. She turned around and looked toward the, the time machine. She would come here every day. A primary reason for coming was to see if her father, Daru, had been here. Anytime she let her guard down, she would come to try and examine it. She told him it would cause a time paradox, but he didn't listen. She needed to keep constant watch. To be honest, she had a lot of things she had to do. And then she heard the metal door to the roof open. Was it her dad? She squinted into the darkness, but the person she saw was much smaller than Ataru and had cat ears coming out of her head. Therese had a spring in her step as she approached Suzuha. Therese's real name was Rumio Akia. She was Daru's friend and had helped him in many different ways in 2036. So Suzuha had known her ever since she was very young and had always called her Big Sis Rumi. For whatever reason, in this era, she always wanted to be called Faris though. When Suzuha asked why, she simply responded, Faris is Faris, an answer which meant nothing to Suzuha. Labo ni dare mo inakatta kara, kochi kana to omotta ra seikai datta nya. 
はい差し入れ守り物で悪いんやけど Free showed her a cake box with the logo from the maid cafe where she worked May Queen Neon 父さんがラボに不在でよかったよ If he ate something like that at this hour, he'd get even fatter. Darunyan じゃなくて Suzunyan への差し入れにゃ。私に？なんで？にゃふふ、好きなくせに。Therese grinned and nudged Suzuwa in the side of her elbow. あ、私は別に。Freeze opened up the box and showed her what was inside. Zero could smell the sweet cream and fruit. <laughs> Therese laughed and handed over the box. Therese gave her a mischievous wink and looked up at the time machine beside them. Suzuwa looked around the roof as she asked. It was solely thanks to the freeze that no one had really noticed the massive object on the roof. She was the higher to a rich family that had a lot of influence in this area and had contributed a lot to the development of Akahabara. She was helping to hide the time machine. この風呂は、なんというかお苦情はフェリスが刈り上げちゃったから平気にゃ。オーナーさんには体幹ゲームの研究をしてるって言ってあるにゃ。ちょっとは苦しいわけにゃけど。助かるよ。気にしないでいい
Kazuya yanked her gun out of her jacket and in an instant ran towards the stairs as fast as she could. She heard someone running down the stairs as soon as she did. The sound heavy military boots in a wide stride got farther and farther away. She opened up the door and jumped onto the landing. Then she raced down the stairs, skipping three steps with every stride. But still, it wasn't fast enough. Kazuya was born fast, and she'd been trained to be faster, but it wasn't enough. When she finally made it to the second floor, she could hear the loud revving of a motorcycle. She panicked and slipped on an object that had been left halfway up the stairs, then rolled her way to the bottom. She managed to get into the right position and protect her head, so it was her hips that stuck to the ground. She forced herself and ran outside. She could see the tail lights of a large motorcycle speeding away. The driver was wearing a black helmet and a, and a riding suit, and already a good distance away so she couldn't even tell if they were a man or a woman. They revved their engine loudly, as if the mocker and then spun and then spun a corner and disappeared onto Center Street. <laughs> a little later, Faris caught up. <laughs> She put the gun in her hands back in her jacket holster and brushed away hair that sweat had stuck to her brow. バグが転がってたにゃ。ちょうど視覚になる位置だった。多分わざと落としたんだよ。しかも私がそこを通るタイミングでエンジンを空ぶかしした。見事に引っかかったよ。トラップってことかにゃ。ああいうことが突っさに
still in chapter one but hopefully you, you have enjoyed so far if you do want to see more please let me know down in the comment section below if you want to see more i'll definitely bring it your way and um yeah we'll keep things going so once again thank you for watching stick around and i'll see you all next time see ya